Patria Socialista Muerte. He was a socialist firebrand of the old school, Fidel Castro's friend and his successor as leader of Latin America's leftist revolution. The man who called George Bush Mr. Danger and worse on his own weekly TV show. You are a donkey, Mr. Danger. You are a donkey. But though Hugo Chavez joined dictators and despots in a coalition of the unwilling, he kept selling America oil, and his own ideology was cloaked in such humor and Latin charm that it was often hard to say how serious he really was. To his critics, he was a demagogue, the head of a personality cult which deliberately weakened democracy. To his supporters, though, a champion of the poor and the author of the boldest social experiment his continent has ever seen. Who is leading the struggle to build that socialism here in our 21st century. Please welcome the president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez. I'm just a human being, as you are. No more, nor less, but totally devoted to this struggle for equality and justice, to see if we can save um, the planet. And the major, the great crazy guy is in, in Washington, not here. It was over 20 years ago that Chavez, then an army colonel, launched a military coup. It failed, and he was jailed for two years. But his hatred of Venezuela's money delete had struck a chord, and by 1998 he was elected to the presidency. At his swearing-in ceremony, he declared that the country's constitution was dead. Four years later, Chavez was briefly ousted from power himself. He blamed Washington for plotting against him, and even the UN Assembly in New York was not immune from his baiting of George W. Bush. Yesterday, the devil came here, right here, right here, and it smells of sulfur still today. The key to the Chavez revolution was Venezuela's oil, nearly 7% of the world's reserves. He tore up contracts with foreign multinationals and nationalized their oil fields. And he used the high price of crude to fund workers' communes in a country where millions survive on just a few dollars a day. No government has ever done this before. We aren't workers, we're partners in a cooperative, and we all get paid the same. He serenaded Fidel Castro, his idol and mentor, sending oil to Cuba in exchange for Cuban doctors. And he befriended President Ahmadinejad of Iran, ridiculing claims that Iran was trying to build a nuclear bomb. He could talk and joke with his people for hours on end, using his own TV show named Allo Presidente. And though the former coup leader was to win four times at the ballot box, America's neoconservatives seemed to hate him nonetheless. Chavez in Venezuela with a lot of oil money, he said he's a person who uh, was elected legally just as um, Adolf Hitler was. If the US empire thinks that by invading Venezuela they're going to stop the Bolivar Revolution, they are very much mistaken, they are very much wrong. Or by assassinating me, they're going to stop the impetus of these people, millions of millions. He is very much mistaken because the result will be the deepening of the revolution and this will have an impact not only in Venezuela but in the rest of Latin America. But for all its sound and fury, the Chavez revolution didn't really turn into the geostrategic nightmare America feared. He was the superstar symbol of resistance to the gringos to the north in Washington. And a portrait of Simon Bolivar, the Venezuelan who led much of the continent to freedom from Spain, was never far away. 
Yet he was also a polarizing figure in a Latin America less inclined to Cold War battles and the ideology of Che Guevara's day. On a visit to London, the new Labour government ignored him, but he was fated by the old school British left. I remember very much my English class. Do you want a cup of coffee? Do you want a glass of milk? The tragedy is that there are no politicians like him left in Europe. I mean, here, you, you barely have a choice in terms of policy. In Venezuela, the people have a very clear choice. Either they are with Chavez or they are with the oligarchy. The following year, his opponents rejoiced in a rare victory after Chavez lost a referendum which would have allowed him to run for president as often as he liked. The people have spoken and the people have said clearly that we will not accept a dictatorship or totalitarianism. But that referendum eventually passed. After a decade in power, the old Chavez magic had not worn off. Though Human Rights Watch says there's now almost no judicial independence, that a critical TV station has been taken off air and that its own workers have been expelled. Te llevaré en mi caballo, que ese es mi mejor amigo. In 2011, Chavez was diagnosed with cancer. Though he carried on singing, deriding his enemies as fascists and pigs, and cementing his ever tighter grip on power. The squalid opposition say I'm dying, that I'm at death's door, that I can't go on. So now I'm going to continue to get better, little by little. I propose, God willing and with your support, to govern here until 2031. Last October, Chavez was re-elected with 54% of the vote. The man known as El Comandante had not stolen an election. He didn't need to, and now we'll never know if he ever would. He'd used Venezuela's oil wealth to give its downtrodden hope. And though Fidel Castro was to outlive him, it was Castro's pupil who had rekindled the dreams of the Latin American left. He'd put his country and its revolution on the world stage. Greetings from my wife, from my children, and from my country and my people. That was very kind. Well, you must be very tired. You like and though he could be grandiose and verbose, his common touch never deserted him, as in this exchange with the film director, Oliver Stone. Have you worked? With uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. No. no. It's a good, 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 good. Uh, He's a good actor. Uh, very, very good actor. But much older. Very good. I like, I like very James much. James Bond. Everyone likes James Bond.